You always ask me, yeah, but what work have you done? So finally today, I'm gonna to reveal to you absolutely everything that I have done to my face. So welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, hello, I'm Tracy. I put out brand new fitness, wellness, lifestyle, and really pro-aging content every single week. So if you haven't already, make sure to consider subscribing. It's totally free to do so. And if this video is interesting for you, give it a thumbs up, because it really does help this channel. So. I love talking about stuff like this. And you know, it's interesting that I haven't really shared this before, but in recent months, I really changed the direction of my channel and I shared and kind of, you know, hinted about this a while ago. If you haven't checked out that video after this, check out this video. So with this new direction, I feel like, you know, it's finally time to start talking about this stuff because this is definitely something I talk about with my girlfriends all the time. You know, like, what do you get done? What makes you feel good? What did you used to do? So today I'm gonna to talk to you about what I have gotten done, what I used to get done, and what I would like to get done. Right, so I wanted to quickly just address something. I don't know what was going on with my camera's microphone when I was shooting this video, but it obviously was not working. So sorry about the kind of crappy audio. Stay tuned. I'm telling you, there's just so much in this video, but for some reason, my microphone wasn't working. I had it on. It won't happen again. So I really think it's important to start off this video by sharing a couple things. Number one, your face is your face and my face is my face. I am absolutely not telling any of you that just because I've gotten something done that you need to do it or that you should do it. I don't feel that way at all. And I really feel that, you know, this is really personal. This is a completely personal decision. You know, what you want to do or try out. That is your right as a woman to do that for yourself. So, you know, I don't need to hear like, you don't need to do that or you shouldn't do that or why are you doing that? And Because I certainly wouldn't say that to you, but I, you always are asking me, so I'm gonna just share with you my experience. And that is really, you know, what the purpose of this video is. The, the foundational part, and this is something that I always talk about when we're talking about like how to look a little bit younger, or how to look healthier, or how to look more whatever, uh, youthful, right? That really, the foundation of that is what are you eating? Are you exercising? Are you hydrating? Are you sleeping? And you know, what are your bad habits? Are you drinking and smoking a lot? Because all of those things, I don't have to tell you, that's what makes up your skin, right? Your skin is your largest organ. And if you're treating your body like then your face is gonna look like Living in Miami, you see a lot of girls and really a lot of young girls getting a lot of work done. And in my humble opinion, and this is just my opinion, I think that actually makes you look older. You know, I see 35 year olds that I think are closer to my age because they are so pulled back, their lips are so plump, there's not like any texture or anything in their skin. They end up looking like a, a, a mannequin. And I personally, this is just my choice, again, these are opinions here, I don't feel like that looks really good. So let's dive into the specifics, you know, but really take good care of yourself. You know, you can count on me to help you with that. I've gotten loads and loads of video here and so much more to come that's gonna help you to support you looking and feeling your best at any age and any stage of life. And let's all be friendly and kind to each other here because, you know, again, these are personal choices and decisions, right? So let's start off with something that I think will actually surprise you quite a bit. And that is, I think in my entire Entire life I've had three facials <laughs> um, now I love you estheticians so let me tell you everyone I think you should find a good esthetician I think you girls are the best you're artists you're so good at what you do and I know that I have estheticians in my community so I'm just giving you guys the biggest hug but facials in and of themselves, they're just for whatever reason, not something that I've actually really invested my time to research or to just, or my money to do. I just haven't done it. You know, when I worked at a spa in Italy many years ago, my roommate, uh, she was an esthetician at the spa. And so she like one day gave me like the best facial. She dyed my eyebrows. I'd never had them dyed before. She gave me like a lash perm. It was just like such a pampering, wonderful experience. But when I was living in New York, I had a great, great dermatologist. And what I did do a lot of was chemical peels. Um, she really recommended, you know, those sort of like more medical grade peels. So I didn't do those peels where it's like, you really look crazy and I've never done any of those more intense ones. But these are the kind where it's like, you can get a peel that day, you look fine the next day. Like you can go out and do whatever. 
um, but that's that day of you might be a little bit red. So I have a little story time for you here. So there was one time I went on a surfing trip uh, in Puerto Rico and I was with my friend and I was like, okay, let's put our, my bag, like, you know, I had my stuff with me, which had my passport, my wallet, you know, everything. We were like, let's go check out the break because, you know, I was like a cool surfer girl. And we didn't lock the car. Like, I'm a New York City girl. Like, what the hell was I thinking? Yeah. And so, of course, I got robbed. So I'm in Puerto Rico. I don't have a passport. I don't have a way to get home. I don't have an ID. I don't have a wallet. I don't have a credit card. I have nothing. Um, so that was like a fun adventure. But then the day that I went to get my passport renewed, I had a chemical peel that day. I wish I'm going to try and find it that we could insert a photo here because when I tell you my old passport picture, I looked crazy. My face was completely red. It was cold in New York, so I had this hood and like this jacket. I looked like I was unhoused. I mean, it was absolutely insane. So um, I wouldn't recommend getting a passport picture the day that you get a chemical peel, but I did find them really great for improving my skin texture um, and also any kind of pore clogging that was really, really helpful for me. And if you are an esthetician, especially if you're one in Miami, please tell me what kind of facials I should get, what should I invest in, and really I want to know like what really moves the needle. Uh, my skin, I do think sometimes I get like pores around my nose. That definitely has been improving lately since I sort of changed my skincare a little bit. But you know, if there are things that I should be doing, please let me know and let's get active in the comments. So let's talk about Botox. <laughs> all right, this you get you ask me about this all the time. Look at my face right now, like a lot of movement, a lot of fall. Have I gotten Botox before? Absolutely. I love Botox. I think it's fantastic. So I started getting Botox uh, when I was about 30 years old because I had a very, very strong 11 that I had even when I was in high school. I had one little frown line that drove me bananas and I knew at that age, this is just gonna keep getting worse and people are gonna think I'm mean. So I was probably the first of any of my friends to get Botox and I found such a good dermatologist. I'm gonna actually shout her out. So if you're in New York City, Dr. Sapna Wesley, I love this woman, like big heart to Dr. Wesley. She was my dermatologist, so she's an actual dermatologist, but she also is fantastic with Botox. And so I started going to her, and I, I just really, one of my Pilates clients recommended her. Um, she's relatively around my age, and I just love her. She's just wonderful. And so I started going for Botox. So where have I gotten Botox? Well, at this point, I feel like, where haven't I? Um, but here is the deal. Like I said, these girls walking around Miami that like literally the only thing that moves is their eyes. I just feel like you're a little overtoxed <laughs> and it doesn't look good. So I am hugely, and any advice that I would tell you, and again, take it for what it's worth, is find someone that's gonna give you a natural look, right? Um, you know, stuff happens with Botox, so you want to just say, listen, do less because you can always go and get a touch up. So I get Botox here, I get it in my forehead, I get it around my crow's feet. Uh, let's talk about, uh, oh, and I've gotten it in my neck. The neck is amazing, okay, because why? I have taught Pilates for 25 years. You're constantly bringing your chin down. So, so the platysmal muscle here, its only job is to pull down your chin and that's what's gonna give you a double chin look. But also women that tend to be a little bit more slender, what happens is we get kind of cording and banding and I was getting that, so I didn't like that. So basically they just put a little Botox in here. I think it's great. It's like whatever's gonna avoid me having to get like plastic surgery when I'm older, I am here for it. So let's talk about some horror stories of Botox. Now, uh, I you know, went to Dr. Wesley forever in, in when I lived in New York. She was my girl. But then when I moved to Miami, I, I kissed many a frog <laughs> uh, here in Miami. And uh, it was it was not good. You know, I, I went to one person that was just she she did my neck once so strong that I couldn't even curl up to do Pilates. Like I, I was like, you paralyze me. So don't overdo it. I think it's really important and I like having some movement, you know. I don't want to frown though. That's one thing where I'm like, kill it. Just kill it. Like I do not want to be able to do this. These muscles for me are so, so strong. So one thing that Dr. Wesley told me was, 
you want to sort of in between your sessions try to get movement back and they say I don't know if this is true or not that your muscles can sort of atrophy in between so um, you know do your own research ask around ask your friends you know but it's an option you know and again I'm not saying you need to do it this is what I have done I you know, I probably get Botox like three times a year or so. There is there is a kind of Botox. I mean, Botox is the brand name, but there's Botox. I think there's D-Sport is the other one. And then there's something new that supposedly lasts for six months, but there's something in it. Again, this is not this is not my, my area of expertise, but there's something in it that supposedly kind of gives you like glowing skin. And I tried that the last time I went to my doctor and I really, really did enjoy it. And I did feel like, you know, it did last about like a month to two months longer than Botox. Uh, and I really liked it. So again, you know, I'm due for Botox. So let's go get some Botox. Let's go get some Botox. Look at this forehead. That's some movement going on in there. So I am fortunate enough that my spa that I get my Botox is walkable. So I'm gonna walk in town and inject my face with you. Doing a little Daxify to keep her fresh, fresh and glowy. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we have some peptides in here, so we get more anti-aging properties. So that's what makes it like glowy. Mm -hmm. I loved this when we tried it last time. Yeah, but it's been shown also that using neurotoxin stimulates not just a little collagen from the injury, mm -hmm. but a little elastin. Oh, we love that. Yeah. I really like this though. This was like, and it lasts a little. Yeah, longer, it does. Yeah. But I also loved like about a couple weeks in. Yeah. Like, see, I was like, damn, my skin is like glowy, right. you know. So that's the peptides. I also think what's nice is that most other neurotoxins work on a bell curve, mm -hmm. and this one kind of just a little like slower total uptake, mm -hmm. but also as it goes away. So yeah. It's like. For us that like like expression and stuff, yeah. like it's nice. It yeah. definitely lasts longer. Totally. If someone wants total frozen, they <laughs> love chasing it. Right. That can be more frustrating. Yeah. Because, yeah. No, I like the. You can see it, right? Yeah. So this is great to get your neck to lift up. Make sure. You'd rather start light than too strong because you know that happening was oh, really? not with you. You couldn't wash your I head. couldn't I couldn't do Pilates. <laughs> so lips. Let's talk about lips. I get accused constantly of having fake lips. I do not have fake lips. What I do do is I know how to overline my lips in a way that looks natural so it makes me look like I've had lip injections. And if you want to know exactly how to do that, check out this video next. I'll also leave it up in the cards and in the description down below. I give you my five makeup tips to look 10 years younger so you'll definitely want to check that out next. I love my lips. I I think, you know, I was just blessed with good lips. I've always had full lips. I can show you pictures of me with a, as a baby. I had big, juicy, full lips. I don't know where they came from because my mother and my father don't have them, so it's gotta be some recessive gene. But they're not like so huge, but really with makeup, I can make them look a little bit bigger without looking clownish. So, you know, definitely learn how to do your makeup. Um, lip filler, I think it's great. I tried it one time. Um, and I'll tell you why I tried it. My husband was very angry with me. <laughs> he was like, you've got to look like one of those Miami girls. But I wanted to do it because what I realized, and I probably will do it again, but hear me out. It's not for plumpness and it's not for shape. I like the shape of my lips and I'm very, very specific that I do not want you to change the shape of my lips. I don't want anyone to know that I've done anything. What I wanted to do it for was hydration. So the woman that I went to in Miami, she did a half a syringe of filler, and this was now two years ago. And I have to tell you, I have a friend who is very like opinionated 
and she will tell you like that looks like crap I don't like that she'll just look right at you and be like what did you do I don't like it she didn't even notice so I all it did is it just kind of smoothed out some of the fine lines which I absolutely do have in my lips and I just tend to be dehydrated I talk for a living um, I probably don't drink enough water and I do notice that with age and time and it's normal that I get these lines and I don't really like that so I probably will at some point uh, get another little half a syringe but like I said that lasted me like I haven't done it in two years so I think it, number one you really really with lips you got to find someone that's super good I see examples of bad lips in Miami all the time it's not doing you any favors but I think you know for hydration or you know I have, I have a friend who, who gets her lips done and they look amazing like you would never ever know so do your research ask your friends find someone but um, that was my story with lip filler. I also used to do a lip flip when I would get my Botox. Um, I don't do that anymore because I talk for a living and I felt like I had to really overuse <laughs> my mouth to talk. It was nice because it did sort of give a I don't know, like a fullness, like when you smile, you don't get that little bit of gum, which I think that's nice, but honestly, I don't really care. Like, I'm happy with my smile, and I just, it wasn't my favorite thing for me. I think it can look fantastic on some people. So again, these are all personal choices, um, but I just found for what I do, I was like, this is really hard, because then I felt like it was overworking other weird muscles, um, and it wasn't my favorite. Something that I also have done once before um, is I got the, the masseter Botox. So I got it in my jaw because this was probably 10 years ago easy. I was noticing I was really clenching and it did make a huge difference. I haven't done it since. I don't really know why. Like I'm trying to figure out what I'm going to do about this situation. Um, the last time I went to my injector here in Miami, she was like, it's not really that tight. I just think I'm a clencher, so I'll have to figure that out. But this can really, really help. Botox also can help with perspiration, with migraines. So there's other uses, obviously, for it. So that's another thing that I have done before in the past, but I just don't do it. So let's talk about surgeries. Have I had plastic surgery? No, I have not had any plastic surgery, but would I or will I do it when I feel like it's right or if it feels right for me? Absolutely. <laughs> Scares the living crap out of me. Surgery is, it's a big deal, right? I had a, um, a mole that had some like precancerous cells removed here. And I was like, can you just like give me a little, <laughs> he said no. But um, I, I had to get that done and I had like a hand surgery this year. And make no mistake, the level of just healing that it requires and just the inflammation that it creates in your body, you know, so it's obviously not something to take lightly. I did once uh, years ago, I had a tear duct that detached, kind of gross. Um, and so I did have like an eyelid, you know, a tear duct uh, attachment so I do have a little scar on my eyelid but I've not had plastic surgery or any kind of knives or you know anything major done to my face filler all right so let's talk about filler we talked about the lips like I said one time almost two years ago so I think filler again it's very much a slippery slope um, I have had temple filler the last time that I went to my dermatologist because again this is called you know fit people problems <laughs> uh, we tend to lose fat here so she puts like a little drop there so you don't get like such a, a pronounced uh, indent in your face and I thought that was really great um, I have had cheeks done but I haven't had it done in, in a long time now um, and the reason why I got that done is I I got really skinny many years ago because I was going through a breakup and you know my doctor was you want to find someone that's like you don't need that yes you need this no you don't need that don't look for someone that's like trying to make a quick buck right and so my doctor Dr. Wesley she was like you know what and she, I would be like do I need this should I try this and she's like you don't need that you don't need that you, you know no you don't need that but there was one point when I went to her office and she was like you know what like your face, you've lost a lot of the fat in your face because I had probably dropped 15 pounds. It was that heart rate diet. So we did do a little cheek filler and it, and it was nice. Like again, it was like very natural. No one really noticed it. So again, it's about finding the right practitioner. Um, now it's not something, there's like one little like wrinkle that I have around here. So like I might the next time I go get like a little drop because it's just like the difference between this and that, you know?
Okay, so I wanted to give you an update. I did nothing to my lips. I didn't do any filler. I only did Botox. I talked to her about lip filler and um, she actually recommended something else, which is called a skin booster because I don't, these are my lips, these are my natural lips. And she said there's something called a skin booster that will actually help with that internal hydration. I have lip gloss on right now, so it looks fine. And I wanted to show you my face. This is now Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, th this three days later. So I can still move a little bit. Hopefully that will go away because I don't want to be able to frown. There's still a little bit of movement here. This will smooth out more. Crow's feet look better, right? And then my neck, that will smooth out even more with time. So that's what Paula was saying is that it's kind of a slower curve for the result to kick in, but it's also a slower burn on the back end. So I really like it. That's my update for you. But again, my face, right? So I don't know, I might do it, I might not. I also think it's like really a good thing for us to do is like look for women that look great. You know, like Penelope Cruz, she has some wrinkles around her mouth. So I always remind myself like, it's, if it's okay for her to have them, like it's okay for me to have them too. Like again, personal choices. But if something really, really bothers you and you wanna get it done, again, it's your face, it's your body, it's your choices, it's your investment, right? Do what's right for you. I've never done any lasers on any part of my body, but let's talk about what I do want to do or I'm kinda of considering, and maybe you can help me with this. I have always had veiny, skinny hands, even when I was in my 20s, and sometimes like, I feel like because I, you know, I wear sunscreen even in Miami and you know, we've only been here five years. I definitely have more freckles. I definitely notice that my chest always has, you know, some sun on it, even with sunscreen. But, um, you know, and I, I would put sunscreen on my face, my chest, and you know, a little bit on my arms or whatever when I'm going for a walk, my hands drives me crazy. So um, I have very, very thin veiny hands. So I'm probably going to ask about like, what is it? I think the solution is, I watched a video about this, is like doing some filler in your hands. I don't know if I want to, I, I don't know. I don't know if it bothers me enough. I will tell you one thing though, when I started on HRT, which was about now, not quite a year and a half ago, I noticed improvement in my skin. So that's because you're, you're shifting your hormones so some more collagen production can happen. And that was one of the things I reached out to my doctor and I was like, am I crazy? Because I feel like the skin on my hands is a little smoother, a little less like kind of starting to get a little crepey. Um, and I have noticed that that has improved a little bit. I have a crazy scar because I had that hand surgery, but you know, I just have veiny hands and it's, it's honestly, it's, it's a bit of an age thing, but it's also just a genetic thing because I had veiny hands even when I was in my twenties. So, you know, I think filler is the solution for that. So that is something that I would do. And you know, when the time is right, if I want to do like a neck or something like that, I'm going to do it. Right. But that's really all I've done. So, you know, to answer your big, big question that you've been asking, what have I done? Botox, healthy eating, <laughs> drinking a lot of water, being happy, that's probably the biggest anti-aging thing you can do. Eating healthy food, moving my body, right? And just loving myself, right? That's what I want for you, that's what I want for me, and I think that one of the most beautiful things about YouTube is that we are creating this community of loving each other, loving ourselves, you know, really um, just deciding what kind of life we want, what kind of body we want, what kind of face even that we want, right? And that really just starts as a personal choice. So, you know, that's it. You know, you've been asking me this forever. Like I said, crappy skin, crappy habits, all the Botox in the world, it's not gonna make a difference if you don't take care of yourself. You've got to have a good foundation. So if you wanna know my makeup tips for looking 10 years younger, definitely check out this video next. If you want me to do an updated skincare routine video, let me know in the comments. I will absolutely do that. I hope that this puts your mind at rest, right? Because so many people, I don't have a filter on my camera. I get accused of that all the time. I have a Canon 70D. You you can Google it. It doesn't have a filter on it. So this is, this is it, right? Um, all of you are so kind and so sweet, but of course there's, you know, the occasional troll out there. So 
this is me, you know, hate is gonna hate, but all of you are lovers and I just appreciate you so much. Thank you for sharing this conversation with me. So I hope that you found this helpful and informative. And of course, if you have any other questions, definitely leave them down in the comments below. You know, you interacting with me, it really helps the algorithm. Give this video a big thumbs up. And like I said, please do consider subscribing if you haven't already done so. It's totally free to do so. And I would love to welcome you into our community next. All right, see you next time. Bye.